So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim Ahmad Hu of Sali Allah Rasul Al Karim Amma Bad for Aud Billah in the Shaitan Rajim, Smila Rahman Rahim. Call of Tahazallah Walada, Mala Humbihim in Ilmi Walali Aba Ihim Kaburat Kalimatan Tahruju Min Afwa Hihim In Yakuluna Illa Kadiba. And they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has adopted a son. And usually we consider this statement to be about Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. But there is one that is coming that is going to play on this and claim to be God. The Antichrist. The Antichrist represents in a way everything opposite of Jesus. What everything Jesus does in the spiritual world he will be able to do in this world to, pr to prove that he is actually a spiritual person. So what is Isa والسلام, known for? He's known to cure diseases. And so you have a relationship between the Qur'an which talks about the curing of Isa والسلام, his ability to cure people by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the relationship between the Dajjal who will also claim to do the same. And over here I must share with you the difference between Masihu al-Dajjal and Fitna al-Dajjal. Masihu al-Dajjal is the person. He is a person that will be born to a family. He will lead people. But the fitna is something that precedes the leader. Fitna is the social phenomenon. It is the phenomenon that takes place in society that which will allow him to lead. The, when this fitna happens, it will create a situation where then he can lead the people. Now let us look at this tradition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The Prophet said, In ma'ahu, with the jal will be water and fire. With the jal will be water and fire. Ma'ahu ma'an wa naran, fa naruhu ma'an barid. The, wa the fire with him will actually be very cool water. Wa ma'uhu narun. And the water would actually be fire. So this is what Dajjal is. This is deception. He will give you hellfire but it'll he will give you fire but it'll be water. He'll give you water but it'll be fire. He'll do he's the opposite of what should be. And uh, in the same way the Prophet as I will discuss this hadith if I have time, but the point I wanted to make first was this one. The Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam La yadkhulu al-Madinata al-Masihu wa ta'un Dajjal will not enter Medina al-Madina meaning Madina al munawwara where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been uh, resting. So La yadkhulu al-Madinata al-Masihu wa la ta'un nor a plague nor a pandemic nor the disease that travels in the air by definition that is what is a ta'un is a disease that seems to travel as if in the air from one person to the next person to the next person this is by definition so now why did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talk about the jal not entering medina and why did the prophet talk about ta'un not entering Medina. Is there a relationship between Dajjal and Ta'un? Is there a relationship between disease and Dajjal? Because Dajjal will be the one who claims to be Isa, the Messiah. Who claimed to be the Messiah, but he's not the Messiah. He's the false Messiah. But he's going to claim to cure people, but he's not actually going to cure the people. So there is a relationship of somehow because Isa والسلام, comes in the context of the one who cures the people, helps the people in their, in their healing, their need to heal. So Isa والسلام, comes with this need or this idea of curing the people. The Jan will also come to prove himself that I am the Messiah. I am the Son of God. You have to listen to me. I'm also doing what Jesus did. I'm doing what Jesus 
was known to do. I am Jesus. I am the Son of God. He will claim to be the Messiah. He will claim to be Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. So you have a relationship here between here thought between ta'un, which is a disease, and a dajjal. And so there is now we have established there's a relationship between a dajjal, a maslihu dajjal, the person, and ta'un. So what is the relationship between the two? We know there's a relationship. But there's a relationship of deception. And the Prophet ﷺ tells you the Jal cannot enter Medina. And Ta'un cannot enter Medina. Why does the Prophet give us this criteria? He gives us this criteria because number one, somebody is going to try to enter Medina and they cannot. And something is going to enter Medina that cannot. And so the the Dajjal, which means to be an imposter, the Dajjal will be discovered, will become apparent, will become obvious by what? By the ability or not ability to enter Medina. The Dajjal will not be able to enter Medina. So therefore, he is not Masih. He's not the true Messiah. And if some claimed Ta'un enters Medina, if some claimed ta'un, disease spread by the air, is entering into Medina, not a little bit, but in thousands of cases of ta'un in Medina, when the Prophet said, Dajjal and ta'un cannot enter Medina because the Dajjal's litmus test of his being an imposter, one of them is, he can't enter Medina. And Dajjal has a relationship with disease, and if a disease enters into Medina, then that tells you it is not really a pandemic, it is not really a plague, it is a false alarm. And so, this Dajjal will tell you there is a new world coming. It is a better world coming, and he has a relationship with disease. And let me now share with you this next point over here, inshallah, when this comes, the great reset is the idea of using a disease to bring about a new world. Now, this is not just any website. This is the website. This is the worldeconomicforum.org, the great reset. There is an urgent need for global stakeholders to cooperate in simultaneously managing the direct consequences of the COVID-19 crisis. And so we have Circus 19 here, and we have two problems. We have a relationship. We know that a new world will be brought into place with a Dajjal. And we know the number 19 is a fitna. Number 19 is a fitna. And when you have the two things coming together, a disease being used for a new world, which is the hallmark of the Messiah, the disease, the one who cures the disease, the one who comes and fixes the disease, is the hallmark of a Messiah. This is what Jesus does. This is also what the Antichrist does. And hence, the Prophet ﷺ talks about this king, this ruler, this Messiah who will come. But he won't be able to enter Medina because he'll be the false Messiah. But he'll bring a new world with him. And in this world, he's going to give you two options. This is also interesting because, you know, he doesn't want to just condemn people or force people. He wants to give people an option. You're either with us or you're against us. You can choose this way or you can choose that way. You can choose. You have the right to choose. And what will happen is he's going to give you fire and he's going to give you water. And the hallmark of Jannah is water. Jannatin tajrim in tahti hal anhar. And the hallmark of hell is fire. Why will he bring fire in hell? Why will he bring fire and water? He'll bring fire and water because people will be desperate for water. People were desperate for water at the time of Jesus. People will be desperate for comfort. 
Because the only people that will be rich are the people that are tyrants. That is, you will have everything but own nothing, if you know what I mean. So the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum, is talking about an urgent need to change the world using COVID-19 crisis to their advantage. This is the Great Reset Initiative. Okay, The opportunity. We encounter a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery. This initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state of the global relations, the direction of nat national economies and the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, just as the number 19. That is a fifth enough for the people who disbelieve. I'm just sharing with you. I'll show you this point uh, sh uh, sh uh, shortly. Drawing from the vision and vast expertise of the leaders engaged across the forms communities, the Great Reset Initiative has set a, a set of dimensions to build on a new social contract. Do you know what new social contract means? It means a new world order, a order of new contract with the citizens, between the citizens and the people in authority that honors dignity of every human being. And so... There is a new world coming, and this disease and the number 19 are responsible for this. Now, let's go to the Quran and try to understand the interesting relationship that this new world offers. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, In the hellfire, there are 19. So this 19 is a number that is of the number of angels in the hellfire and it is a warning of something that has to do with 19. Okay, and so when these verses were revealed, okay, when these verses were revealed, what happened? Abu Jahal said, who is what? The Fir'aun of this Ummah. So now there's a link with Fir'aun. And so now you will find Fir'aun saying the same thing. I own this water. I own the waters of Misr. I own the waters of, of, of Egypt. And no one can have water without my permission. And hence now you have a relationship between Abu Jahl and Fir'aun. And Fir'aun and Ad-Dajjal who also will give you water. He will say that I control everything. You have the option. Go A or B. And the Prophet said, go with the option of fire. Be in his fire. It'll actually be cool water. Okay. So, let us now understand this. I just want to share with you the uh, Ibn Abbas anha lamma nazalat alayha tisat ashir qala Abu Jahl al-Quraysh uh, Abu Jahl said to the Quraysh, 19 in the hellfire will kill I, I could take care of them. Okay. I can take care of them. Okay. Uh, he said, uh, I can take care of, uh, their, their, uh, النار, and, and he said, I will take care of them. And whatever remains of them, you can take care of them. Okay. So, who is it? It's Abu Jahl. Sorry. Abu Jahl in Quraysh. He said, I'll take care. Don't worry about this. Muhammad's hellfire is nothing. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, Oh, by the way, the hellfire has angels in it. It's not just human beings. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This number, it's a fitna for you. You got caught up in this number, right? We didn't make this number 19 except as a fitna lilladina kafaru. Okay, except as a fitna for the people who do kufr. So this is a fitna for the people who do kufr. So if you ever find the following, you find the number 1 and 9 being used, like 9-11, like Circus 19, you see the number 9 being used, 1 and 9 being used. And they're talking about a new world that they will present to you as a consequence. And you see it has something to do with disease and curing disease. All these point to none other than Masihud Dijjal. No one other than Masihud Dijjal. This points all 
the, the relationship between a, a new system that will be put in place, you either choose this way or this way. And Allah is telling you that number 19 is taking you to the hellfire. That system that they want to implement after this is going to take people to the hellfire. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, beware whenever this number one and nine come together, beware of this. How many people know this? How many people have thought about this? But no one's going to think about this because everyone's in their happy la-la land, not realizing that they're on a train to hellfire. They're, tra they're on a train that is bound towards hellfire. And they're going to say, yes, 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 yes. All in one. Because they're not using their Quranic minds. They're not using their Quranic thought. And they don't know, and they have not connected the events of the time with the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet. And so they haven't connected that. What did Fir'aun do? Fir'aun, you know, also, uh, like, uh, so Fir'aun also, وَنَادَ فِرْعَوْنُ When Fir'aun called out فِي قَوْمِهِ He called out his people قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرِ Do I not have? Am I not the great one? Am I not the powerful one? Am I not the one who can help you? Who, who is this person here? Musa, who is he? He has nothing. Look at me. I'm the solution to your problems. يَا قَوْمِ أَلَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِصْرِ وَهَذِهِ أَنْهَابِ Look at this water right here. تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي The same word used in the Quran for the water of Fir'aun that Allah uses for Jannah. The water تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِي أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Do you not see? Do you not have eyes? أَمْ أَنَا خَيْرٌ Am I better? أَمْ هَذَا الَّذِي هُوَ مُهِينٌ or this despicable person, وَلَا يَكَادُ مُبِينَ Who can't even talk. And then, he says, فَلَوْلَا أُلْقِ عَلَيْهِ أَسَاوِرَةٌ مِّنَ الذهب. If he's so great, why do not bracelets of gold drop on him? أَوْ جَعَاهُ مَلَكْ مُقَرَّنِينَ And why don't angels come one after the other, helping him in his cause? So he made his people scared. And he made a mockery of the people, his own people. He made a mockery of them. He made a fool of them. Why? Oh, you're going to obey to him? You're, you're following this conspiracy theory? You're following these silly ideas? And they obeyed him. Because they don't want to be the ones told that you're following these conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories, the word has become worse than uh, saying a cuss word. And so, like Fir'aun, the Jal will also say, here's water and here's fire, and you make a choice. Which world would you like to be in? Where would you like to be? Okay. And so, the Prophet said about the Jal, he would have water and fire with him. And the fire would be cold water. And the water would be fire. And the Prophet told us, go in the direction not of the cold water. Not of the water, but go in the direction of the fire. That will actually save you. So what do we have here? We have a relationship between the Jal and Isa. Isa being the one who cures the diseases. The Jal trying to be the imposter who cures diseases. Now let me share with you an important point that I wanted to make here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Here it is. Now tell me when the Prophet said plague will not enter Medina, why are there so many cases of now new cases and death from Circus 19. These are the statistics. Seven day average 984. Okay. 1,000 for a whole year, there have been this plague coming to Medina, this so-called plague. Now, if you believe the Prophet, and if you agree the hadith is authentic, and if you agree this is all pointing to something, it is pointing to the fact that this plague is not really a plague, because otherwise it would have not entered Medina. 
it would not have entered Medina and there would have been very little to no cases. It wouldn't have entered Medina as a permanent thing. But this is now going on for two years. So you have this thing that has entered Medina that should have not entered Medina. Just as Dijal will try to enter Medina but cannot enter Medina and therefore the people who are living inside Medina who you'll be trying to convince to come to him, he won't be able to go to them but you'll try to convince them to come to him. But the people that are intelligent and know what the Prophet said, say, they'll say, why didn't he come into Medina if he's really the Messiah? Why didn't he come into this city if he's really the Messiah? The intelligent people will be able to tell he's not the Messiah, he didn't come into Medina because Isa والسلام, will be buried by the Prophet and because he will be buried by the Prophet we know therefore he must be able to enter Medina and because he will be able to enter Medina we will know this is the true Messiah. So coming to Medina and being in Medina is a litmus test for the truth and the falsehood of the Messiah. And now that a false disease, a false disease has entered Medina, that is not a disease, then they're going to change the world in response to trying to cure it. Shut down everything until you do things our way. Shut down everything until we bring about a new world. Shut down everything until people become desperate. Shut down everything until a new world comes into being that then you will feel you have no choice but to go in the direction of that if the fact is you do. And so now when you tie everything together, the fitna of number 19, the circus 19, the wanting to change the world, giving promises of a better new world, giving promises of, you know, we're going to cure all diseases. And all these things are pointing to the fact that we are now at the countdown of the beginning of the end. We are going through a time the Prophet called Laylatul Muslim. I don't have time to go into this right now. Laylatul Muslim, the dark night, a night that will take us right into the mouth of the lion of the Jal. A dark night that if you don't make your hijra plans, you will be regretting it. Now, of course, the Prophet ﷺ gave us all these forms of guidance. So, first of all, he told us to leave the jal. But he said, if you get caught by the jal, then choose the fire, don't choose the water. Choose the option that doesn't look good, rather than choosing the option that looks convenient. Even if you're desperate for water, don't take the water. Even if you're desperate for water, take the fire. Because when you find out the reality, because Dajjal works on deception. And is and Dajjal means deception. And the Prophet told us about the relationship between disease and Dajjal the same way the Quran tells us of the relationship between Isa, the real Messiah, and disease, his curing the disease. And so Messiah, the real Messiah, will cure people from many diseases. One of the reasons perhaps for Jesus to come back, alayhi salatu wasalam, one of the reasons for Isa alayhi salatu wasalam to come back is probably because we're going to need his du'as and his expertise and his bi'iznillah where he's going to have to cure many, 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 many people from the diseases that they will be suffering at that time because the Masihud Dajjal will bring the disease and then pretend he can cure them. He will come with a solution that's not the real solution. He will come with a temporary solution. And so he will come and it will look like he has great power, but he has no power. He has the same power Fir'aun had. You can choose. It. Even many great magicians accepted Islam in front of him. There will be some people that will be right there in front of the Jal. The greatest Shaheed will be the one who will confront the Jal. He's not all powerful, but he's a great master of manipulation. But even that man who gets killed, the minute his manipulation becomes discovered, 
meaning the believer sees this is Dajjal and the manipulation is discovered. When the manipulation is discovered, his ultimate power over his mind is taken away. And it becomes more clear to him, in fact, he says, now after you've killed me, it's even more clear you're a Dajjal. But you have to be clear here. And so, the relationship between Dajjal and disease. The relationship between Dajjal and his power to give you two options. Go this way or go this way. To give you a better world or a far less better world. Keep you in your desperation. Go live in the fire. Go live out there. If you choose to, to do the right thing. And the main point is when number 19 and disease and power are coming together a new world and it has something to do with number 19 and it has something to do with disease then i am assuring you and you should assure yourself that the beginning of the countdown has begun and so now it's time for the muslims around the world to prepare for a very disastrous situation that the whole world is going to face a very disastrous situation the whole world is going to face and probably in less than 20 years we will be in a very very difficult world in a very different world let me reiterate some of my points before i end dear brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this number 19 as a fitna for the people who deny the truth the people that are up to no good People like Abu Lahab mentioned here in the tafsir. And he is the Fir'aun of this Ummah. And then the Prophet says, Look, Ta'un, an epidemic, a plague will not enter Medina. And Masihu Dijjal will not enter Medina. Yet they have entered Medina. And if you look at the definition, Ta'un, epidemic disease, plague, or pestilence, a waba, but it's different from waba by reason of which air is violated. Okay, and what else? The shayateen and the jinns take part of throwing spears of this. So somehow the shayateen are involved. And it is a violation of the air. Okay, the, and by it the constitutions and the bodies are violated. Via what? A disease that as if it is traveling from air. And that could be because of the shayateen or whatever else. I'm not going into that today. Okay? But I'm only saying, the Prophet said, such a disease that travels by air will not enter Medina. Will not enter Medina. And if it has, then it is not what the world is telling you. Then the world is lying to you. And you better check on your information and so when you have the number 19 and what is interesting dear brothers and sisters i was thinking of doing this but i'll do it okay that this is ayah number 31 and as you know 13 is their favorite number and this ayah has 57 words which is a multiple of the number 19 okay so let me show you. So now if we count the words in this verse, there are 57 words. And you count the wows and the harfajat together as one. So let me just see if I can put the cursor. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. 19 times 3 is... 57 and this is ayah number 31 okay so those of you who know about 13 and 1 and 3 
then they will know how this relates to magic. Okay, and so I'm not going to go into details about this, but this is a significant point because this is this ayah has 57 words, and this is how 19 relates to 31. For those of you who know from previous conversations what I'm talking about, so. Allah says, وَمَا جَعَلْنَا عِدَّتَهُمْ We didn't make that number إِلَّا fitna, except as a fitna لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا For the people who do kufr. The people that will be the same as Abu, La Abu Jahl. The people that will be the same as Fir'aun. The people who will say, we control everything. Everything is under our control. Those people who say, we will give you a better world. Do you want to go in the way of Islam and Khilafah or our great reset? And the Prophet said, لا يدخل المدينة المصيح والطاعون المصيح will not enter Medina. And طاعون will not enter Medina. And then he also said, in explaining the deception of such a one, the Prophet said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, about him, about the uh, Dajjal, that what will he do? He will... Uh, he will control the water and the fire and tell you choose between the two. He's going to act like a Fir'aun. He's going to claim, claim to be the Messiah. He's going to claim to cure people and fix people and to cure diseases like Isa alayhi because he's the real Messiah. He's I Masih Isa ibn Maryam. So now, if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. And then, how can I wake up people that have their eyes open and still can't wake up? How can I help somebody who has their eyes open and still can't wake up? It doesn't take a lot of brains to understand that we are at a very critical junction in history. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ونساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Oh, I wanted to end by I will have in the link uh, for people that want to support uh, me I want to get some projects done so if you want to donate something في سبيل الله give it uh, if you have extra then give it inshallah and then inshallah the knowledge wherever it goes uh, will be of benefit and it helps me uh, in for completing my projects. I don't need money per se, uh, but if somebody gives it to me faster, then you know I can do things faster.